Hello and welcome back to the restaurant show. If you weren't hungry before this, I have a feeling you're going to be. I am and excited to share with you a little bit about Oliver's Public House. I'm joined now by Ricky, who is the owner and general manager, and executive chef Cameron. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited, excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to chat with you guys. So, you guys have some incredible food. If you haven't been to their website, um, some great photos on there. We're going to show you some today as well. But you're going to cook some things for us or, or present some things for us. So, the first thing we're talking about, Cameron, is this beet salad. Yeah, so this is. New to the menu as we get into the spring yeah. uh, spring months. We haven't seen it quite yet, but it's it's a little bit of a breach between our fall, winter, going into spring, thinking that, getting people to think about fresher ingredients. Oh, I love as that. It starts to warm up a little bit. Yeah, it will. Don't worry. It's going to happen. Um, and I love a good salad. So is this is the fresh ingredient sort of the inspiration or what makes you think like beets in a salad i wouldn't be the first thing that comes to mind um i really like beets in salad i especially like this type of salad because the escarole is a slightly bitter green um the okay. beets we serve both roasted and raw um so it does give a nice textural difference to the dish okay great and you were talking about the fresh produce so let's chat a little bit about that as we start to get into spring we can look forward to some of that coming into season you guys i'm sure source a lot of locally done fresh produce yeah and i got up here a couple of years ago from chicago mm -hmm. um, and trying to develop that relationship with a lot of small production farmers um, in madison and especially coming into oliver's mm -hmm. um, and the inspiration that Ricky and the rest of the team brings into the restaurant has always been very helpful and supportive, yes. especially as I'm working into something a little bit different from what I was doing before, Right. Um, which is more of comfort food from okay. Oliver's. Yeah, yeah, I love the way you're doing this too. Okay, if anyone at home has, can relate, I like my dressing evenly spaced on my salad, so <laughs> your method so, is a winner. It always, it always helps to dress the bowl first, so you're not just getting a bunch of dressing only on one piece of lettuce. I've never seen that before. That's a first for me. Um, and then getting all your ingredients in after, so you're not bruising too many of the greens. Yeah. But you always get like a little bit of bite with everything. You bet. So we have the spiced almonds, which are just toasted with a little bit of chili, um, a little bit of cinnamon. And then we have oh. the roasted shiogi beets, which are these little Dice ones and we roast shiogia or a candy stripe. Yeah, shiogia. Learn something new every day, okay. And then we have the shaved raw beets that I just dressed a little bit of water, sugar, and salt solution. So it helps to soften them up and bring out their natural sweetness. So you get something a little crunchy, a little bitter, sweet, a little spicy, kind of nutty. And then you can do these based by putting them in the oven, Parmesan on a sheet tray for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. So you get more of a crouton a crunch, without adding the... Like uh, crunchy crouton, cool. Without okay. adding any bread to it. And can I, I'm gonna look at this. Look at how colorful and beautiful this is. We all need more color in our diet, yeah. so what a, what a great thing. It's definitely hopeful for spring. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Now, Ricky, I was looking at your, uh, your menu. You guys have a lot more than salad. Okay. Um, you were saying you do a great lunch throughout the week mm -hmm. um, and brunch on the weekends. Yeah, I think brunch is definitely our kind of, you know, go-to service that I like to recommend people if you haven't yeah. been. Um, our brunch is phenomenal. Um, one yeah. of our omelets for sure. I love a good omelet. I'm going to try one of these. Can I? What is yeah. it? Yeah. Tell me again what I'm eating. It's just a crispy Parmesan. Oh, my God. That's great. Okay. Sorry, we were talking breakfast. Yeah. Omelet. Yeah, the, so the, we have an omelet on the menu. Uh, we sent in a picture for you guys to see that's... Uh, Actually named after the cheesemaker at Blue Mont Dairy, Willie Laner. Uh, we see him come in uh, after the uh, farmers market on Saturdays quite often. So mm -hmm. just building that relationship with local farmers, you, you know, produce vendors and cheesemakers has been That's a goal great. of ours. So okay, so this one has house bacon, spinach, apple. Um, I bet it's really good. So you've got that. And let's talk about what else we can expect to see on the brunch menu. Um, again, yeah, one of the pictures we sent in will show our uh, classic sandwich, so house cured and smoked bacon, um, or choice of bacon, ham, um, comes with some cheese, a sunny side up egg, and a brioche bun, so definitely really tasty. Um, we have a traditional eggs benedict, can't go wrong there, um, and then the breakfast burrito, which everybody seems to know and love. Uh, Who doesn't love a good <laughs> breakfast burrito? I know I do. 
Um, okay, so you have a pretty extensive menu and all really good stuff, it sounds like. And I know um, folks at home, if you haven't tried them yet, go head over to University Avenue. But Cameron, with you kind of looking forward to a fresh start here, what kinds of things can we expect? What are you most looking forward to? Um, I'm most looking forward to taking um, Ricky's restaurant name, Oliver's Public House, and really banking on an idea of a restaurant that is very developed into the neighborhood. And that's been a pretty much a staple for the past couple of years since they opened. Yes. So going towards a direction of a lot more approachable comfort foods mm -hmm. um, without too much fuss, because a lot of my food is supposed to be meant to be spoken. It speaks for itself simply without oh, overcomplicating. Yeah. Don't make it complicated. We don't need any of that. Uh, OK, really quick before we go, you have any events that you've now got this great, talented chef that can help him sort of showcase some of that creativity. Yeah, in the past we've done events that we're pairing either beer, wine, or spirits with. Mm -hmm. uh, we typically do those on like a Sunday evening. We're not open for dinner service on Sundays, so it gives us an opportunity of not turning away our regulars, um, but giving them a reason to come by. Sure. And uh, we should be doing one of those kind of end of May. Give Cameron here some time to settle in, and then no, you don't need. To. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> and then everybody else uh, a chance to kind of get on that creative side. And those events are always really fun for us. Uh, anybody yeah. working those events, so so much yeah. fun. Well, I'm gonna have to come to that event. That sounds great. And you guys have some awesome things on your menu. So head over to Oliver's Public House on University Avenue. I'm gonna eat one of, one of these as we go out to break. Yeah, Do you have fun? Absolutely. Yeah. We yes. love having you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more restaurant show after the break.